you get really tight and tense on your forehand, then I'm gonna help you to fix that problem in this video. Now the solution might be very different to what you're expecting, but I can assure you that this is gonna be what's going on. I hope you find the video beneficial. If you do, give me that thumbs up. And if you enjoy this type of content, really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel as well. So the common advice you're gonna get for relaxing on your forehand is to focus on being more relaxed, to try and be nice and loose with the wrist and potentially hold the racket a little bit more lightly, just maybe focusing on one or two or three fingers so you can be really relaxed. And you've probably tried that and it didn't work because for the vast majority of players, it doesn't work. And I wanna explain why that is and what you can do about it. Now, there are kind of two main things going on here. The first one is you're probably a little bit late on the ball. Now, in order to maintain a nice, relaxed, flowing, loose wrist, our racket needs to have done the work. We need efficient biomechanics. We meet the ball in an ideal position, and now we've got kinetic energy. We're transferring that kinetic energy into the ball. If the ball is too far back, you hit the ball late because either you didn't sw start your swing at the right time or you didn't have the right speed of swing, you now can't hold the racket gently because there's no kinetic energy and the ball is just gonna take the racket out of your hand. So your brain's pretty smart. It is gonna tighten your grip and tighten your arm to prevent that from happening. And the second thing is really along the same lines. It's all about visual prediction and your brain not being able to predict where the ball's going. It's really, you know, it's, it's a great idea to go, yeah, I'm just gonna stay nice and relaxed. But there's a lot going on visually when you play tennis. And our visual system is kind of, uh, it's our priority within our brain. It's how we navigate the world. Processing visual information takes up a whole, you know, a massive amount of kind of brain real estate more than anything else that we do, in fact. So if you can't accurately predict where the ball's going, your brain is just literally churning through going, oh no, where's the ball going? I, I need to be in the right position. I've got to do this, I've got to do it. And it just, it, it's a really challenging and stressful thing for your nervous system. So what you're actually kind of seeing within the tightness of your stroke is just the level of stress within your nervous system because your brain can't predict where the ball's going. And you can't just you know, artificially overcome that. Our visual system is one of our most dominant systems. We need to know where the ball is to be able to hit it. So again, for that reason, your body starts to kind of tight up, tighten up through contact as a protective mechanism. Because when we're stressed, we're not nice and loose and we're relaxed, we kind of tighten up and do this. It's just hardwired and built into our system. Okay, so now that we know the underlying problems, what can we do to fix it? Obviously the first one is gonna do, be to do everything you can to improve your timing. And the first part of fixing your timing is to think about it and focus on it within your practice. Try to meet the ball in an optimal position, kind of make it a priority. But potentially you've already tried to work on your timing and it didn't work, so then again we need to ask the question why? What's going on here? And we have to work through it logically. The biggest reason that a lot of players don't time the ball well is because they don't prepare soon enough and they're not ready and set up in the right position in time. So if that's what's going on with you, you need to spend a little bit of time working on addressing your preparation. I've made a number of different videos to help you with that, so I'm gonna place a link in the description that's gonna give you some tools and things that you can work on to help to prepare earlier and get set up in better positions. The next thing I would recommend that you think about is kind of just being a little bit more light on your toes. Now, when we hit our forehand, we're always initiating that swing through our back and outside hip. So if I'm stepping in to hit a neutral stance forehand, I'm still driving through this hip to initiate it. If I'm hitting some kind of open stance forehand, I'm still driving through this hip. A lot of players tend to be kind of stuck to the ground a little bit and they're arming the ball rather than using the hips and that can really create difficulties with the timing. So just trying to be a little bit lighter on your toes, a little bit more flowy with your footwork can be very, very beneficial for your timing. And again, I've made a, a resource that's going to help you with the footwork side of things. I'll place that down in the description. But then we kind of come to the visual prediction side of things because in terms of timing, the visual side of things is also one of the big things that holds players back. So when you're tight on your forehand, it's just generally struggling to predict where the ball's going. That same thing can cause you to be late on your forehand. So often we've got to do some work on the visual system to really solve the problems that are going on. The good news though is that that is 
something that can actually be done. There are often very specific visual skills that players have deficits in, and we can do assessments for those. I've created a video that's going to show you a couple of the assessments that we can do for the visual system. I'll place a link down in the description so you can start to, to see what's going on there. And I've also created videos that's going to help you to train the visual side of things so that you can predict and read where the ball's going more effectively. So I'll place a link in the description for that as well. So now we've got a number of different resources down in the description to help you fix some of the underlying causes of why you're not able to relax on your forehand. And then it's kind of a, you know, a several pronged attack. We fix the underlying stuff that's going on in our body. So we have the visual capabilities. We work on the footwork so we can set up in the right position. And then we practice it on core, understanding what the problem is, focusing on the ability to meet the ball out in front rather than telling yourself to relax when there's a, a reason that you're not able to relax in the first place. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It's a multi-pronged attack. We've got to focus on the right thing, addressing the underlying problem within our practice. Working on footwork is always a big piece of the puzzle and then trying to address any deficits that you've got within your systems that are preventing you from playing at a certain level. The resources are definitely gonna help, but I find for a lot of players, we need to dive in in just a little bit more detail because the chances are there are a number of different kind of physical things that are preventing you from playing at the level that you want. And this is relative whatever level that you're playing at because tennis is all about eye to hand, eye to foot, coordination, focus, concentration. They're the kind of the real things that dictate the level of tennis that people can play. And if you, you know, you want to play 3-0 tennis, then you only need 3-0 hand to eye coordination. If you want to play 4-0 tennis, then you need 4-0 hand to eye coordination. 5-0 tennis, 5-0 hand to eye coordination. You can't play 5-0 tennis with 3-5 hand to eye coordination. And this often means that players are trying to use techniques that their body simply isn't capable of doing. And in order to be able to use those higher level techniques, you have to train and work on your underlying systems to get them to a sufficiently high level as well. And that's exactly what I help tennis players to do using brain-based training. Everything in your body is controlled by something, so if you don't have good enough visual processing, there's a lot we can do to work on it. If you don't have the coordination to use technique and control the racket head in all the different situations that happen on court, there's a lot that we can do to improve that. I've created a masterclass to teach you a lot more about brain-based training for tennis. It's a free masterclass. I'll place a link up there and down in the description so you can check that out if you're interested. It will also tell you at the end of the masterclass a little bit about my program and how I work with players if if you're interested in potentially uh, pursuing working together. Okay, hopefully you found this video beneficial. Lots of resources available to you. Go out there, start working on it. Be very logical about the way that you try and address your tennis. Don't get distracted by videos claiming that you can fix things with magical tips. That's not the way it works. Tennis is about mastering the fundamentals and basics. That's what high level strokes are built on. So good luck. Any questions, comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.